Do you like spreading purple volatile destruction from enemy to enemy, chaining damage boosts from different sources to supercharge your primary weapon, and leaving enemies confused when you suddenly suppress them with bullets? Look strong, and this battle is yours. Call the Braxic Order, call the Thanatonos, the Jinsen Scribe, call everyone so they can witness you. Double down. Sound tactics. Hey, this video might be for you. Last season I created a build that focused on the use of the Collective Obligation Exotic Pulse Rifle in PvP. But since then I've refined it and also we have a brand new series of seasonal artifact mods that directly affect the utility of that build and take it to the next level. Some of the things I'm doing with this build are genuinely criminal and I can't wait to share it with you. The thing I love about this build is that it can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. If you just want to point and shoot, hey, this build will work for you. If you want to be analytical and do math in real time to figure out when the best possible time to leech a specific debuff is for maximum potential results, hey, you can do that too. But I also want to point out that if you do not have the collective obligation, this build will still work. A lot of this build's potential revolves around having a good void primary weapon. If you love the Graviton Lance or the Last Perdition or a Brass Attacks, heck, I don't care what it is. Whatever your preferred void primary is, it will work. Now, I'm going to break this build down for you in detail, one part at a time. It's going to take a little time, but if you don't want to have to scrub through the video and find, you know, this part of the build and that part of the build when you're trying to recreate it. Hey, I'm going to leave you a link in the description to this entire build displayed for you on one page in great detail, courtesy of Mobilytics. They'll break down the whole build for you in one convenient location and outline the gameplay loop as well. It's literally perfect for this kind of video and for you to see it all listed out in a convenient way. So definitely check that out. You can even pull it up in a separate tab while listening to the video and follow along that way if you want. Alright, let's start with the artifact mods. First, we've got in the last column of the artifact, the mod Void Channeling. As a Voidwalker main, I immediately started thinking dirty thoughts the second I saw this mod. This is going to give you a damage buff to your Void weapons whenever you get a Void weapon final blow. So think Rampage, but specifically for any Void weapons. The amount of stacks that you get depends on how many abilities you have actively cooled down. The more stacks you have, the more damage you do. But I wanted to lean very heavily into the kill chaining here. So I also tossed on the exotic chest piece for the Warlock, the Mantle of Battle Harmony. The Mantle is going to give us extra super energy every time we get a kill with our Void Weapons. And since I'm running Nova Bomb, it's a short sprint to getting that super cooled down. Once you have your super, you're just going to sit on it. Don't use it. A Nova Bomb might get you one or two kills here or there, but keeping it is going to lead to a lot more extra kills down the road. When your super is cooled down, the Mantle of Battle Harmony is going to give you a buff called Absorption Cells, and it's basically Rampage for Void Weapons and stacks with Void Channeling. In other words, hello, easy to burst kills. Next, we're going to have Volatile Flow on, because we're going to be creating and grabbing lots of orbs of light during our PvP duels, and the more benefits we can reap from those orbs, the better. This is going to give us Volatile Rounds every time we collect an orb. More on orbs in a minute. The next thing we need to talk about is how the Collective Obligation actually works. I know a lot of people find this gun confusing, but Bungie took another pass at this gun a few seasons ago and they buffed it. They made it a lot simpler too. This gun is all about stripping void debuffs off of targets and then applying them to your bullets so you can basically suck in a void debuff like Kirby and then get its powers so you can shoot that debuff out. That goes for Weaken, Volatile, and Suppression. So there are two main ways to leech those debuffs. First, if you kill a target in PvP that's plagued by a void debuff, you take it. So if I prime a target with a grenade to suppress them, and then I clean them up with the pulse rifle, hey, now I have suppressing bullets banked and ready to go whenever I say so. Or if I throw my pocket singularity void melee ability at someone to toss them, then I finish them up with the pulse, hey, now I have volatile bullets banked and ready to go. Technically, you don't have to 
kill a target to lead to the debuff. If you shoot them enough, it's it's six full bullets, two bursts, that will lead to the debuff too, but it's a guaranteed leech on kill. And usually if you hit somebody with six bullets after they've received a debuff, then you're probably going to be killing them anyways. The second main way to bank void debuffs is to get hit by one. If you receive a void debuff, then you will immediately bank that buff and be ready to dish it out. So if you get tethered, you've got it banked. You get tagged by a child of the old gods. You've got weakening bullets banked immediately the second it hits you. You get hit by a suppressor grenade. Hey, you've got suppression bullets banked and ready to go. Smoke grenades, as soon as it hits you, it's banked. You'll find yourself intentionally moving into some of those things just to get a debuff banked on your gun. If I see a child of the old gods out there on the playing field, I will run to it and let it tag me on purpose just so I can have weakening bullets ready to go. Now when you have a debuff leached, or two, or three, you can hold the reload button to then apply all active debuffs to your bullets and start dishing them out in a hail of ammunition. When you hold the reload button, you'll set the weapon into its alternate firing mode, which shoots the debuffs, and you'll have 10 seconds to make good use of it, which is a very generous timer. You'll see me sometimes in the gameplay take my ghost out. That's because I'm checking to see which supers the enemy team has ready to go. If there's a roaming super, then I'm probably looking to use some suppressing bullets on them. There's a funny clip in here where I get tagged by a suppressor grenade and then immediately an enemy pops his hammers. So I switch to the alternate firing mode and then shoot the hammers and immediately suppress him the second he throws his first hammer. He kills me, but at least I stopped him from going on a tear on the rest of my teammates who are all congregated there and he ends up going down because he's suppressed and now in the open with no super to protect him. Also, one quick thing to note, if your 10 second timer runs out before you finish off an enemy, but you already started damaging them, then you can leech those debuffs that you just applied to them right back into your gun. So it's like you sent the debuff out and then you ripped it back off and put it back in your gun. So you're recycling the same debuff. It's a fun loop when you get it rolling. Okay, now let's talk equipment. I used to run triple 100s for this build, but Bungie made some serious changes to armor mods and how they work. So I had to dial it back a little bit to a 1010 10-8 or a 1010 9 depending on what I wanted to prioritize. But I'm running Child of the Old Gods, which means I want 100 recovery to put down more rifts, to dish out more Old Gods babies, to leech more weakening debuffs. You get the idea? And I've got the Pocket Singularity, which applies the Volatile debuff, so I have tier 8 strength to throw more of those. But for the Trifecta, I'm running Suppressor Grenades, so I can suppress and leech that debuff as well, so I've got all three debuffs covered in my build. And I've got 100 Discipline to toss as many of those as possible. For the full Voidwalker build, you can see on screen here. Moving left to right, we've got Vortex Nova Bomb for our super, Healing Rift, Burst Glide, Pocket Singularity, Suppressor Grenades, and then for the Aspects, it's Child of the Old Gods and Feed the Void. Devour is a very useful ability when your entire build is about kill chaining. You want to stay in the fight and not have to leave and go heal up while your buff timers expire. You want to keep it rolling. Devour is going to help with that, keep our momentum up. For Fragments, I'm running Echo of Expulsion, which is the old Destiny 1 ability Bloom, and also bumps up our intellect so we can get Mantle of Battle Harmony charged faster. Then Echo of Instability for extra strength to throw more singularities and apply more volatile debuffs. It's also going to give us volatile rounds if we get grenade kills. Then we can just leech those volatile rounds as we're shooting them to charge the collective obligation. Next, the Echo of Starvation to give us Devour whenever we pick up an Orb of Power. And lastly, Echo of Dilation for extra mobility and intellect mainly, but also the Enhanced Radar can be quite helpful. Now we gotta talk armor and mods. Like I said before, you're gonna wanna maximize your discipline, recovery, and strength stats, as those are the ones that dictate how often we can dish out debuffs with our subclass abilities. Artifice armor is extremely helpful here. I use D2 Armor Picker to find the best armor combinations for what I'm after. Beyond that, on my helmet I run double void targeting and a siphon mod for void as well, so we can create orbs on multi-kills. And we're trying to get lots of multi-kills with this build, that's sort of the whole point. And those orbs that we pick up are going to completely heal us and give us devour and give us volatile rounds, so it's important to create orbs and pick them up. On the gauntlets, I'm running reloader mods for both my void and kinetic weapons, as well as a grenade kickstart mod since suppressors have a long cooldown. On the chest piece, the mantle, 
I'm running double unflinching void mods to keep my pulse rifle in line. Everything revolves around getting kills with the pulse rifle, so we want it at peak performance. I'm also running fonts of endurance to make up for my tier three resilience. On the boots, I've got double void surge to give me even more damage output on my void weapons, assuming I've got armor charge stacks. And I want those stacks to last longer and use them more, so I'm also running stacks on stacks to give me an extra armor charge on orb pickup. If you wanted to swap out one of the surge mods for maybe invigoration or innervation, then you totally can. I just wanted the full send on weapon damage. And finally on the bond, I'm running double bomber mods for grenade energy when I place my rift and time dilation to extend my timer on my armor charge stacks to make better use of them. Man, builds are complex. It's a long list. Reminder, if you want to see it all laid out for you clearly, just use the link in the description and pinned comment to go to the build on Mobilytics for you to easily understand and recreate the whole build. Lastly, we need to hit the weapons that I'm using. Other than collective obligation, I like having a good kinetic close quarters weapon to deal with folks who get in too close. I prefer the Empirical Evidence Sidearm or the Submission SMG. The Immortal is for guys who pee sitting down. I'm kidding, please don't get offended. But might I also suggest that if you have a Boudicca Sidearm with Osmosis on it, that is a seriously good choice. I accidentally deleted mine after getting close to a thousand kills on it and I was so mad at myself. But Osmosis gives you another weapon in your kit that can benefit from all these void weapon buffs in our build. And finally, for my heavy weapon, I'm using the Tomorrow's Answer rocket launcher because it's void and it's a really good rocket. You could also use something like a commemoration here too that would kick some serious butt. And there you have it, that's the build. It's complex in its makeup and you can sit there and do all the math in real time to fully maximize your output. But the build is also set up in such a way that it's just going to be working. You can turn off your brain and just go out there and shoot stuff and use your abilities when you think they're necessary. And the build is just going to be working for you on your behalf, increasing your damage output, charging your abilities, healing you from time to time, and you don't have to think about it at all if you don't want to. Personally, I love this build. I fell in love with it last season and posted some nasty trials clips with it too. And this season, it got so much better with the artifact mods. I highly recommend that you take it for a spin and just become a void god on the battlefield, dishing out proper purple violence with a vengeance out there. It's so fun. Let me know in the comments section what you think of this build and feel free to leave a like on the video only if you enjoyed it. If you're one of the couple thousand new subscribers here on the channel in the last few weeks, hey, I want to say welcome and thank you so much for your support as well as those of you who have been ride or die subs for years. I love you all. Be warm and well fed, my friends, and I hope to catch you in the crucible. Three minutes left. Two down. Together, nothing can stop you. I can see why Ikora likes you. Everything is yours. Relish this time. Ooh.